Hello, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Yes. Um, my name is Betty Beregi, and I will be moderating today's session. Um, so today we are gathered here for Pri Umoja Hack webinar. I'm sure we've all had this a webinar happening this month on 27th to 28th. So Alliance for AI together with Zindi um, are hosting today's pre-webinar to just prepare guys on how to you know, perform great um, during the hackathon that's happening this month. So today we also have speakers, not just from um, Zindi competitions, but also um, experts on you know, data science as well to just you know, explain to us, give us tips and tricks on what we can do in order to win you know, such competitions like, like hackathons. So I'm welcoming you all and um, hope you guys have had a great week. Yeah. So basically the program is just presented here an introduction which I've just done. And then after that, we can have the speakers. They'll be doing um, their technical projects just to show us, you know, what, what they've been doing, um, what uh, algorithms will they prefer to use, and, you know, what they do in order to win such competitions. After that, we'll have a panel discussion where they'll give us advice and some tips we need to know even as we prepare for that webinar. Then after that, we can have questions from the audience and also, you know, a sample questions that you guys would love to ask them. Then after that, we can um, have some announcements. And then after that, we'll come to the end of the session. So welcome guys from various chapters in Tunisia, Rwanda, Welcome you guys, even for, for people from Future Makers program, I also take this chance to welcome you all. So I think I will give this chance to David, maybe even before we start to David and Rose, who will just explain about the hackathon and um, David um, will talk about Alliance for AI. So any of you can start, uh, David and Rose. Then after that, we can just take it up um, to the speakers. Uh, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, am I audible? Yes. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, welcome everyone, and uh, I hope you have a great experience today. So, I'll uh, I'll uh, give you an introduction of what uh, what is all about uh, Alliance for AI and what we do. So, um, uh, Betty, you can stop sharing so that I can be able to share. Hello, Betty, can you be able to stop uh, sharing? But uh, I can be able to share my screen. Hello, Betty, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, as Betty, uh, oh, okay, sure. Okay, so um, welcome to uh, this webinar, guys. So I'll take you through what's all about uh, Alliance for AI and what we do, uh, how it relates with. Uh, all these uh, Zindi competitions and whether I can guide you 
to be able to play part in the Zindi competitions and also have a greater career in AI and coding uh, in data science and also in AI. So um, Alliance for AI is a, it's a program that uh, runs to to be able to build uh, young people, especially those in who are greatly interested in artificial uh, intelligence. So uh, we deal with uh, uh, youth from the age of uh, 19 years old to 30 years old, and we run a, we run a cohorts for a three months uh, program that uh, run uh, on uh, on quarterly basis. So the program runs for three months, and these are the following uh, what participants uh, will gain from the uh, from the program. Uh, this uh, knowledge of what the AI does and the belief that, uh, they can play a role, and also understanding on how to work in uh, how work in, is evolving in the future. So we'll be able to see how work is changing with, with time, and how work is uh, evolving uh, with uh, with time. Okay, so then we have uh, a boosted professional profile where we'll be guided on how to do your personal branding, how to uh, be able to share what you do out there on social media, on online platforms, platforms on uh, uh, platforms like uh, GitHub, so that people can know what you do. We all know that uh, in this time and age, uh, visualization is what sells you as a technical person or as an AI person uh, in particular. So then there's um, an international network of people to build out their skills with. So in this program, you'll be able to meet uh, people from different uh, countries. You'll be able to meet people from Rwanda, Tunisia, um, Nigeria, Ghana, and also people uh, from the USA. You'll be able to meet them and also come up with projects that you can do together and you can also share knowledge together. Then, uh, uh, we'll go to these are the some of the common needs that I uh, hold youth from excelling in disruptive technologies. So we know AI is kind of new in Africa, and so people have different uh or different perspectives of what uh, artificial intelligence is. So some may say they, they are unable to know how to keep up with uh, tech trends in artificial intelligence. Uh, some will say they have never heard of uh, artificial intelligence. Um, then uh, people will say, uh, I think I have heard that people, so these people have different different perspectives on what artificial intelligence will bring uh, about, especially in, uh, in our continent, Africa. So these are some of the things that we we'll be able to learn and understand that it's not all about these maids. There's a, a good part of AI, which, are, will be, uh, which will be trying to leverage Africa and so various challenges that are facing Africans rather than seeing it as a problem to Africans. And um, so uh, the program will try to to cover uh, to cover up for the traditional education institution whereby we have lots of theoretical education rather than practical education. And this is a challenge or, or rather a gap that's really affecting uh, Africa whereby if you are just learning in school, you are just learning about theory and you are not doing a lot of practice. So then there's a traditional job office whereby people are still, uh, they have this mindset of just working traditionally, going to work from eight to five and stuff. But we are, we are in, a, uh, in a generation whereby we don't have to run traditional job office and we can also become our own uh, freelancers. We can become entrepreneurs. You can also work at any time of the day depending on how comfortable you are with time. So here are some of the of what uh, will transition from maybe transitional education institution and we'll be able to know to be aware of new technologies changing for example we have artificial intelligence, we have blockchain, uh, we also have others um, that are related to to AI and blockchain that we will be able to be aware of and also in different fields like uh, AI in finance, AI in agriculture, we'll be able to, to understand better in this domain. Then we have exposure on how to use uh, intelligence and disruptive technology to solve real problems. So we'll be able to uh, 
you will be able to visualize the real problems that are facing Africa. Maybe it's an education, maybe it's finance, but then you can be able to handle these problems uh, based on your skills. You can be able to do the practical, uh, real problems uh, that is based in, especially on the Zindi platform with, where they have like real uh, challenges that you can work on. Then there is also software, uh, soft leadership uh, and team collaboration skills for the work. This is where you learn um, of teamwork, you learn how to work with people, you learn about uh, leadership skills as you do your daily to daily uh, daily classes that will have be happening with you. You have leadership skills, you have uh, teamwork skills, and also uh, more more soft skills that will guide you, especially when working on projects as a team. Then um, we have like tenets of the of the of the program. Thereby, you, these are some of the things that you gain from the program. Uh, you'll be able to regain love and uh, believe in uh, belief in your strengths. Uh, who are Africans because February you will be able to know all the history uh, that uh, is all about Africa. You learn more about Africa, how, how it started, how everything started, and how uh, how capable are we to solve our own challenges that we have rather than depending on uh, other persons. We can depend on ourselves and solve our own problems. So we can see also how uh, Africans contributed in uh, innovation, you will see all this history when you join the program, you'll be able to learn all about the African history so that you can have an idea of innovation and an idea of how you can solve uh, the African challenges. Then you'll be become a, a, a respected professional. You'll be able to build your own professional brand, as I mentioned earlier. Then you'll be able to be, have that skill to approach uh, collaborations through teamwork. Then you'll be able to have this team uh, to solve problems and also to perform in, to participate in global hackathon platforms like, like the one that, that, that will happen uh, uh, weeks to come on uh, Omoja Hack. So that's an example. Then uh, you'll be able to equip yourself with uh, knowledge of AI and disruptive technologies. You'll be able to understand uh, some of the career opportunities in artificial intelligence. Then you'll be able to understand um, real life uses of artificial intelligence. Uh, maybe in agriculture, in finance, in health, or in any other um, domain. Then you'll be able to understand AI for software engineers, and understand AI for researchers, and AI for uh, ethicists. So this, uh, in short, we are trying to say that uh, AI is something that it's, um, it, may, it might be new to us, but it will bring uh, a lot of change. And when we, if, we, uh, if we don't take up this opportunity, we'll be really left behind. So we are trying to implement artificial intelligence in all the domains so that people can grab, um, whether you are in finance or doing maybe data science in finance, you can be able to understand more about artificial artificial intelligence in finance, artificial intelligence in software engineers. Just try to apply uh, artificial intelligence in any domain that you are participating in. Maybe you're in banking or in agriculture, just try to, to try to think about how can you apply AI, but we are not left behind this time. So that's what the program will all cover on the basis uh, the basis of AI. Then uh, I'll dive deeper into how the discussions happen in the sessions. So there are, the sessions happen uh, weekly, once a week. Um, and so uh, I'll just uh, try to wrap it, wrap it up. So I'll just cover just small bits of this. So how to practice the, this is how to practice. We have uh, weekly sessions where by we'll discuss uh, maybe like five to 20 people who can discuss about uh, what, uh, artificial intelligence, career opportunities and in artificial intelligence. Then there'll be benefits of the discussion. will be fewer, uh, fewer resources that people uh, lack. We'll be providing these resources. Then you'll gain more skills and capabilities and uh, greater scale and continuity. So these are some of the benefits from the program. So we'll just be moving faster. This uh, uh, hackathon that was won by a team from Tunisia. They won uh, $8,000. And this was a great achievement at Alliance for AI. Then uh, Alex uh, started the founder of Alliance for AI. I'm sure you already came the meeting. We'll get more to about him uh, later in introduce himself. Then these are some of the students that uh, participated in the last year uh, cohort. 
and they have great stories to tell about uh, alliance for AI. So then these are the people who have already uh, finished uh, from AI and they are, they are alumni from, uh, from Alliance for AI. Then that is the SANA program uh, called Alliance for AI Future Maker that when you graduate, you will be able to join this program to work on uh, real-time projects on artificial intelligence. And uh, these are some of the countries that we are currently participating on, uh, mostly in Africa and also we are planning to go to the uh, US. Yeah, so this uh, program, this will be covered later by people who will finish the first program so that they can join the future makers program. Uh, this is a sample of uh, just the, the basic classes, how they happen. This will be covered by people who will be able to register to join the program. All this will be covered. So because today we are just dealing with the Umoja hack, so this will be covered later when you register for the program. And that's it for today. And thank you so much for this meeting. So uh, I'll introduce uh, Ross so that he can take over and introduce the guest speaker and also talk more about the Zindi Umojaha competition. Not the time to also discuss about the, the competition. Yeah. So. Welcome, Bruce, and yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, David, uh, for taking us through that. Uh, let me share my screen. Mm, can you get to my screen? Yes. Yep. Okay, awesome. So hello once again. Uh, my name is Rose Delayla Gesticho and today I'm here to represent Zindi and uh, the Zindi platform as Kenyan, uh, Zindi Kenyan ambassador. So uh, for those who are not, uh, maybe don't have an idea of what Zindi is, uh, Zindi is a competition platform, the largest competition platform here in Africa. So it has over 23,000 registered users, and these are people who are taking part in competitions, and you're going to meet some of them today, whereby they're going to take us through how they uh, conquer and complete challenges and also do their submissions and their thought processes during uh, tackling the competition so that they get a good score and hence them winning. Uh, amount of money that enables them to go about their day-to-day -day life or just yeah getting a source of income from it. So what uh, does Zindi mean to the African data science people or people who are taking part in the data science competitions? First it will test your skills. Uh, a moment. Uh, First, uh, it aims to test your skills against top talent. So when you are taking part in these competitions, you will be taking part uh, with a lot of people. As you have said, there are 23,000 registered data scientists in the platform. And so you'll be taking part, uh, competing with a lot of people who are skilled and you, it will enable you to grow and see uh, your weak points that you can improve on. Again, it will enable you to, uh, participating in these competitions will enable you to learn by doing and you'll get exposure. So you'll be able to now uh, take the initiative to do the technical uh, competitions, you'll get to submit the scores. And when you participate and get a good score uh, on the leaderboard, you'll get to see yourself uh, topping and this will uh, will give you a lot of exposure not only to uh, the zindi platform but also to employers who are looking to get get talent from uh from the data science industry another thing is earning income by doing what you enjoy and do best so again when you win a hackathon there's usually a prize money for that so it can be at times th uh, three thousand dollars plus like in this Umoja hack, it's like $10,000 plus. So this is another way to get income even if you're still in school. So yeah, it's a really good opportunity for youngsters who are taking part in data science competitions. Again, it um, 
it will enable you to build your profile to attract potential employers. As you can name that, um, maybe I'm a top data scientist, uh, ranked uh, three, number three or number four on the Zindi platform. And knowing that there are over 20,000 plus data scientists in the platform, this will give you an attraction to, the, uh, to potential employers. Uh, and then you learn from others through collaboration and discussion. And there's a part on the Zindi platform whereby you can find people discussing about competitions. You can get to see um, how they collaborate on some circumstances to get uh, and, and discuss on which approach would be best. So these are opportunities that by when taking part in the Zindi competition. So this is just basically how the platform looks like for those who haven't registered. Um, it's uh, when you register, you'll get your own profile here, and then you'll get to to look to see this um, this competition uh, this competitions page. So these are just competitions where people take part in different countries. You can see you can take part in Nigeria, in Tunisia. You can take part in these competitions, Kenya. So it just uh, some of them are knowledge competitions which don't have a prize money attached to them. These are competitions that will just enable you to gain your skills as a data scientist. And then these ones uh, that have money, I said them, these are the ones that enable you to gain an income when you're taking part in the competitions and you can also win Zindi points. Um, so for this, for this session, we'll be just talking about Umoja Hack, which will be happening uh which is coming up and if you haven't registered yet uh, or you haven't registered your school yet uh please do so because the hackathon is taking part in 20, from 27 to 28th march and when you look at this when you go to the hackathons part you can find the there's one hackathon for advanced so you can look at it and say okay can we take part uh, uh, in this type of competition? Uh, this is more for more advanced people or would you rather go for a competition for beginners? Mm, yeah, there's a beginner competition. Uh, where is it? This one, finan financial resilience uh, challenge. You can get to see uh, the money awarded. It goes according to the um, the criteria you pick. So if you're a beginner, this is the amount that is assigned to this competition. And then advanced, it will be an instant challenge. Um, this is the amount that will be given to the winners. And this is the intermediate one. So this is the amount that will be given to the intermediate one. So uh, to be eligible for this competition, you need to, um, to be signed in a high a higher education uh, school. So that is an undergraduate school or a postgraduate school. Uh, so yeah, with that, um, it is an inter-university inter competition, hence all African schools are, are universities are allowed to, uh, to fill in this form and register their schools. So we can, uh, yeah, that is, that is mostly it. And then there's some rules when you go to this page yeah you can get to see like what qualifications or rules will be there in the competitions again you can form a team up to four people so there are some rules that are set that you need to go through so that you you prevent being disqualified in the competition yeah so that's something that i can ask you guys to do so um yes go and look at that page ensure you have registered your school if you're taking part in a school yeah, so I've just taken you through the platform and how it looks and just inviting all of you to join in to the Umoja, Umoja Hack Africa 2021 and register your schools and yeah, ensure that you get that money and public, uh, and ensure that your skills are, are set to compete with the rest. Um, but other than that, I'd like to pass it back to Betty. And that was my pre presentation. If you have challenges signing up, again, you can reach out to any ambassador in your country, or you can also reach out to me. Um, I can assist you. Yes, uh, Betty, back to you. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Rose. Um, just a reminder, guys, um, any questions or comments, you can just post them on the chat and just have your mics muted. If you're not speaking, if you get a chance to speak, you can then unmute it. So thank you, Rose and David for that. And I'll, just, I'll take this chance to actually introduce the speakers for the evening. And I'm um, just making a request to our speakers. If you can, um, if it's your turn to speak, I will um, kindly request maybe you can just have your videos on so that um, we can get to see you, to see who's speaking, even as you introduce yourself and what you're presenting on. So yeah, it's just a request. Yeah, thank you. So um, today we, we are gonna have four speakers with us. Um, something interesting about them is that their expertise in, field, in the field of um, data science, and some of them have actually ranked top numbers in such ZD competitions, the one Rose has talked about. Some have previously held um, top five positions. Um, in hackathons like the one we are preparing for right now. So they are at a good chance to actually um, give us tips and explain to us what we can do better. So um, number one on the list is Perez Ogayo. She's from Rwanda. Um, she's an author at Towards Data Science blog and also Better Programming where she writes articles on um, data science. And she also talks about um, lifestyle. Um, Interesting something about her that she has won um, second and third place in Zindi competitions. Um, the other person we have is um, Lawrence Moruye, who's also um, from Kenya, a data science instructor at Huru School. Um, he's currently doing a, a machine intelligence a master degree um, sponsored by Google. And um, currently in Zindi, he's ranked 12th. Um, we have Aza. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce the other name. <laughs> Aza, sorry. I hope that's the right, the right pronunciation. Um, he's a Zindi student ambassador and chair of Alliance for AI Subcom. That's a chapter in Tunisia, by the way, for those who don't know. Um, the other person we have on the list is Ted Michaels Mutomi, who's a lead machine learning engineer at Omdema. Um, he is a graduate from Moringa School and um, he previously worked um, in Afringa as a data scientist. So guys, these are our speakers for today. And yeah, let them present to us the, you know, something that we can go home and learn with and even something that we can use even as we continue to, to learn more about data science. So I will introduce um, Perez, um, who will um, present to us, talk to us. Yeah, so this is your chance, Perez, welcome. Hello. Um, thanks, Betty, for the introduction. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know. If... Okay. Let me try and see if you can see me too. <laughs> Hello? Can you, can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes. Um, so as Betia said, my name is Ferris Ogayo. I am currently a student, finally a computer science student at African Leadership University. Um, originally, I am Kenyan, um, but I went to Rwanda to study. Uh, so um, I started being interested in data science about, I think, a year or a year and a half ago, and um, Zindi competitions and hackathons have been a way for me to uh, improve my skills and meet other interesting people in the field who have also supported me throughout my journey. Um, as Betty said, I have ranked second and third in competitions in Zindi. Um, I ranked, me, my team ranked third on the Umoja Hack Rwanda last year. And I ranked second on a competition in December 
on uh, Tanzania tourism prediction. Yeah, so um, I'll just uh, take you through one of the notebooks um, for the, since this is about Moja Hack, uh, about uh, our Moja Hack um, Rwanda uh, solution. Um, yeah, so if you have any question, feel free to stop me or send uh, your question via the chat. Unfortunately, I'm not able to run the cells. Uh, it will just be presentation mode. So yeah, I wasn't able to um, uh, have my setup for today. Okay. So just give me a minute. Hello, can you see my screen? Yes. And can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Um, so this was the competition. Um, uh, so we had about nine hours um, to you know, come up with a good solution for this challenge. And uh, we are mostly, because this was the country version, we're mostly comp competing amongst like, uh, students in Rwandan or Rwandan based universities. And um, so it was a classification problem. Um, basically, we were supposed to find out if our customer is going to churn or not. So if our customer is going to stay with the company or leave um, the company. So. Yeah, so, um, sorry. Oh, um, okay. Even as we wait for Paris, sorry for that. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, we can have our next speaker, um, Lawrence Moruye. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right, all right. Oh, I should push on, on my camera. <laughs> yeah, kindly. Okay, thank you, Betty. So I'll take you through one of the competitions on Zindi. It is called the Financial Inclusion in Africa. So these are also a classification challenge. 
it, it is almost similar to, I've just looked at the hackathons here for the Umoja hack. I can see we have uh, Umo this one here, financial resilience challenge, Bikina Revo. So I think you can you predict if an individual will be able to make the payment in an emergency situation? So we'll go through this a similar, a similar, a similar challenge. So the financial inclusion challenge is here, I think. This one here. Yeah, this one here. So I'll take you through the whole process that at least I follow in solving any of the Zindi challenges. We begin from from the from the beginning to and then I'll, I'll I'll show a notebook that tries to cover everything. So once you are given any challenge, so, so the first thing you have to do is try to read and understand what problem are you solving. So for instance, in this case, you can see here they are saying the objective of this competition is to create a machine learning model to predict which individual are most likely to have or use bank account. So if you're given such information, you already know if it is a binary classification or is a, or is a regression challenge. So in this case, it is, it is, we already know it is a classification challenge. So after you know the problem, then you can go ahead and do some, try to understand more about the problem. You can do this by doing EDA. After doing your EDA, then you can do from EDA, you are able to get some useful insights. So the insights will allow you to create some more features from your from your the data. And then you can it can also, the more you understand your data, the more you know which kind of cross-validation strategy you are going to use. So the cross-validation strategy is very important because it, it allows you to see how you are performing both locally and also on the Zindi platform. So it allows you to avoid, uh, if maybe you notice you are overfitting or you are underfitting. So you can you can try and see, you know, some of the solutions that you can do to avoid if you are overfitting. You try to avoid overfitting and that that is only possible if you understand your data. So that is it. So if you are new to Zindi, so once you sign in, you, join, you have to click here to join a, a challenge. So in, instead of submit, we haven't enrolled for a challenge. So you'll create here, you, there's a button here called join. So you join and accept the terms. And once you've joined the hackathon, now you can go to the data, data, data here section, you can access the data. So you can see here, so you can load, download this data set and build your model. And then this is this is usually the test file. This is, doesn't have uh, the target variable. So we're trying to train a machine to train our model, sorry, using this trained data and then predict, use the trained model to predict on this test data set. And then from here, we can upload our solutions to using the submit button. So let's go ahead and see some of the approach. So I'm going to use Google Corab. So the first thing you do, if, if you are using, I, I prefer Google Corab, it's a bit faster. And also if it's a deep learning challenge, so it gives you a free GPU. So you can also use cargo kernels, but now you can still also use cargo kernels, especially for deep learning and also Google Corab. For me, I prefer Google Corab. So the first thing you do is you mount, you have to mount your drive. I have downloaded the data set here. I, I, you download the data set here and put it on your drive. So once you have your data set on your drive, then you can read. I never wanted to execute this anyway. <laughs> so if you execute, I'm not going, I, I just ignore it. So if you, you once you mount, you have to uh, you you have to go to this URL and then you get some token, then you paste it here. Uh, that allows you to access your data set from the drive. So so and then you have to import all the necessary libraries. For example, here you can see pandas, number, and so forth. So you have to import warnings. I, I, I import warnings to avoid any warnings that usually occur. But probably, and then this this allows me to display all the columns and blah blah. And then the next thing here is uh, reading the data set. So this is the train and test data set. And now we begin, once we have our data set, now let's begin the process of trying to understand our data. So the more the more you understand your data, the better, because you, you'll be able to create more features, you'll be able to have a good validation strategy. And it also allows you, you can also even predict how you, you're going to perform in your in the private data set that, you, that is only revealed once the competition has closed. So in our data set, you can see, let's check the number of columns. So you can see we have uh, about, the, our size is about 23,000 rows and we have 13 columns. And this is how my, the first five rows look like. So you can see we have country here. This is how it looks like. So this is our target variable here. So the target variable here is, is, a, is a binary, but then 
but then it was i think it it it, it is yes or no so in this case i want to dummify so dummify is like we want to convert it to like uh, you, you know you cannot train a machine learning model based like giving the target that is uh, that is a, a categorical variable so you have to, co look, to convert it to a numerical value so and then now we can have a look here so if you look here the target variable on train it's yes or no but now we, we are converted it to one and zero so so and then you have to look if we have any missing values so you can see we don't have any missing values if you have any missing values you look for a way don't just blindly fill the missing values with mean or median or standard deviation so at times if you have like 70 percent missing data so and also i don't don't prioritize dropping some people will tell you if you have a quarter mass some and missing values drop it don't drop it blindly at times you may find that the column that you want to drop is even the most useful column so you have to understand your data so you can try and see any patterns so any patterns that you see in the data can help you can help you see how you're going to they can give you an idea of how you can fill the missing values. Uh, and also, if you're using boosting algorithms, for example, XGBoost, you don't need to worry about missing values. For them, you can also, they have a way on, of how to like identify patterns between the data and able to fill the missing values by themselves. So, uh, but unless if you're using a linear model, for linear models, they, they, are, not, they are not good with missing values. You cannot train a, a, a linear model with missing values, so you have to fill, to fill the missing values. So we, we want to see some statistical, if you, you use Describe to check some statistical analysis. So you can see here, for example, this, for example, you can see bank account, you can see the mean is 0 0.04 and so forth. So household, age of respondents. So Describe is going to give you an analysis of, of, of uh, numerical, numerical data. So for example, you can see, if you look at the age, you can see the mean is about 38. The maximum is about 100 and we have the median is about 35 the standard deviation is low so this means we can see a standard deviation of 16 the mean is 38 and uh, and the median is about 35 so you can see the data is skewed the, the is skewed towards the left you can do the same with the test data set so you can also this allows you to check any discrepancies between train and test so at times you may notice especially on zindi at times they they give you train data set test data set that is a bit different from from for example anybody who took part in the zimnat challenge so in the zimnat journey the test data set was a bit different from the train so if you notice the test data set is a bit yes it has the same columns but now the the distribution of the test data is somewhat different from the train so you have to look for ways of first converting your test data set to be in the same in the same way as the trained data set. So this allows you to, to like to mimic how, how you how you're going to perform on the, the leaderboard. So we want to check for any unique features. If you notice that that a feature has several unique values, so that feature is most probably is not useful. So you can drop it. So in this case, you can see bank account. We don't have any a feature that all its values are unique, so you can leave them. You also need to check for constant features. So for constant features, they don't have any value. They don't add any value to a model, but a model spends a lot of time trying to run a useless, a useless button. So you have to drop constant features if you have them. So in this case, I created a list and you can see my list is empty. So there's no constant features here. And now we want to separate our features. But we know we have put categorical and numerical features. So we take uh, we, we can do analysis on both of them separately. So I'm separating my categorical and numerical features. And then now we can see, we can do some analysis on numerical, on, on categorical data. For example, I'm using, a, a, I'm doing P14. So in P14, you can see country with respect to bank account. So you can see Kenya about 25%, Rwanda 11% and so forth. Location also the same thing. So this analysis here allows you to see, to decide what features are you going to create? It also gives you an idea. Gives you an idea. For example, if I had, if I had several, several, for example, you had a column that has several missing values. For instance, chances are based on the other characteristics. You can maybe fill that missing value with some value from Kenya because it's dominating, and so forth. You can also see the education level. 
you can see here there's something unique here six so any unique patterns within you, you recognize in the data you can take some time to investigate so if you investigate something like this you can see we have education level we have don't know vocational tertiary but you have these six here so if somebody maybe somebody can blindly can blindly drop this column here but, but to me, it makes sense. So this are, uh, you also need to do as you like solve your machine learning problem. You can also do some research. So Google is the best place. So if you see a feature like this one, this education level six. So in some countries, for example, in Tanzania, they have form five. I think they, it's form five and form six. So this is somebody who feel that is who feel the form saying is highest level or the highest level of education is form six. So it makes sense to have to have these as a, as one of the education levels. But maybe if you drop if you drop this one, you say maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe you're going to lose some important information. So this is important to, importance of doing some EDA. So now we can concatenate the two data sets, train and test together. And we can do maybe numerical analysis together. You can see age of respondent based on the, this, uh, the statistical analysis. So it's indeed true. The data is skewed towards the left. And we can also check the possibility of an outlier. You can this this you can this you can do the interquartile range or, or you can use a, a box a box plot. So this IQ this is the formula. It's like the basic statistics that is covered in high school. You can see we have eighty five point three seems to be outliers. So in this case. I don't also, if you notice there's an outlier something, don't also just, don't just drop them. You have to drop them if you are really sure that these outliers, they never exist in test data sets. For example, in this challenge, I tried to drop these data, the feature, the values that are above 83.5, and then I noticed that my, there's a poor performance. So if you, so it doesn't mean once you have outliers, you must drop them. So you can also drop them, you can you can try anything like build a model with outliers and also build another model without outliers and compare their performances. For example, dropping a 3.5. So it, it also appeared that in test, we also have people with age above, above 83.5. So it's useful to work with them. So you can also do the same thing for household size. This is also the same analysis. You can do everything we did with on the on the edge. You can also do it here because it's also a numerical feature. And now let's focus on categorical variables. So, for example, you can see the distribution of jobs. You can see most of them are semi-employed and so on. So this you can also do for marital status and so on. So this like I'm trying to do to get a clear picture of how, how my data looks like. So the, like it's easier to understand anything that is as some graphical representation than understanding numbers. For example, if, if you see like, if you see, if, for example, if you are, you are told Kenya has maybe 800, 200 has something like 10,000, just by numbers in the next like one minute, you'll, you'll just forget. But we as human beings, we also like, we are able, able to like remember, we can remember something that is in a graphical form more than we can remember numbers. So. We can also do the same thing for location and so on. <clears throat> and now another thing in machine learning is feature engineering. So feature engineering is actually creating more feature. Probably you can do this from domain knowledge or based on the patterns that you can see that you that you you are able to identify. If you identify any patterns in the test in the data set, you can use those patterns to build more features. So, for example, I'm doing the frequency. You can you can this is one of the common ways of creating. Of create or doing feature engineering by doing the frequency count on your data set. You can also do by feature interaction. So you can add one feature with another, divide by one feature by another, subtract one feature from another. That's by interactions. But in doing feature engineering, for me, the way I prefer doing it, I create several features first and then drop one by one. I don't because I, I found in, in several instances, I found this way working than creating a, a feature at a time and build a model with one that feature. So if you build several features first, so if, if, if like you have one feature, you use one feature at a time, once you, 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 you add one feature, build a model, check its performance, and drop that feature if the performance is poor, is not good, because a feature, one feature may be useless by itself, but once you have several features, 
the other features make the feature that was useless to be a very useful feature. So you rather have several features first and from a set of several features, and then you can now drop one by one, or you can create several features and do feature selection. So we have several methods of feature selection. So you can use maybe wrapper methods or filter methods and so on. So you can also, these are the categorical variables. So the categorical variables, unless you're using maybe cut, the boosting algorithm, for example, cut boost, you can pass, you can give it a data set that contains categorical variables. But if you, are, you want to use maybe a linear model, you have to convert, you have to convert your features into numerical variables. So dummy, dummy file, think of these as one-out encoding. And now we can separate our data set back because we have done everything together. If you want to do, for example, in this case of doing rebo encoding or converting categorical variables to numerical variables, ensure that you concatenate first, you have your train and test concatenated together. And, and then after you do, after you do like rebo encoding, and then now you can separate them. So, and then here I'm separating them back. And then now we want to build a model here. And because this is a, it, 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 is a, it is a classification challenge, I'm going to use a stratified k fold. So um, you set your number of folds and remember to set the seed. This one ensures there's consistency because if you want to, if, at the end of the competition, if you finish top three, Zindi are going to request for your solution and you have to run it. So if you don't set the random seed, you, you will get different solutions. Each time you run your model, you'll be getting different, different results. <coughs> And in setting your code in, in parameters, we have several important parameters for any model. For example, these I'm using a light GBM. For light GBM, we have the running rate. It's very important. The running rate contains the step. So remember, we are just optimizing. We are looking for the best parameters that give a good results. So if you set a running rate too high, <clears throat> your model may never reach the optimal which you are interested in. If it's too low, it's going to make a very small step size. Also the maximum depth, so the larger the better, but also you need to be careful. So if you set it too large, your model is going to overfit and we don't want to overfit. So between five and 10, it's okay. And also if you are using like X, XG boost, for XG boost, you can set it to unlimited by setting it to none. Also I have the bugging fraction. So for the bugging fraction, this is actually the, the fraction that is the, the fraction of the features that are going to be used. It's also very important. At least these are some of the important features. And also for XGBoost, you can also, the maximum depth, the maximum depth, the running rate and the bugging frequency and bugging fractions are like top features that you should focus in tuning in any, mod, in any of the top three, any of the models. And now the, our, our score, we, the, the, the evaluation metric for this challenge is the correct, like the wrong prediction, the score of <clears throat> the wrong predictions. So it means it's the error rate. So once you get your score and then you subtract from one minus the score, you get the error rate. That's what, is, that's what we had tested for this challenge. So once you are done, now you can, you can prepare your submission file and then it has to be on the same format that Zindia said. So if you go to the, to the submit section here, you can see we have submission. So there's a format here that they have said you need to submit. This is how your submission file should look like. So you have the unique ID, X, and then your country, the country name. So if you do that, and then you submit, and then you get your score. So this is what I'm doing. And also once you save, ensure you don't, you, you set your index to false. And then now you, you can download your file here. And then this file that you download here, then you can submit it to Zindi and you get your score. That is it from my side. Thank you so very much, Lawrence. I will interject here. Hopefully you guys can see my video. <laughs> Um, that was an amazing presentation on very, very technical tidbits on, on how to go about, you know, running one of these uh, Moja hackathons. Uh, and by the way, since no one has complained, I imagine you guys can hear me, correct? Yeah, we can. Yes. Wonderful. That's, that, that's great. Well, by the way, my name is Alexando. If you don't, uh, you haven't seen me before, I'm one of the people who helped uh, put this together. And uh, very, very excited to see that there's so many people interested in 
competing in the Umoja Hackathon that's going to be a one and a half or so weeks. Uh, if you guys are not, um, if you guys are not uh, aware, the the deadline is today. I think Rose mentioned that earlier on, but I don't know if people caught that. So if your university has not signed up, uh, try to figure out how you might be able to do that today. Uh, and, and by the way, I can see that uh, what, 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 one of the folks <laughs> is taking center stage of the screen. <laughs> Let's see. How uh, do we actually uh, move that? Okay, here we go. If you go to gallery, gallery zone. So yes, the, the deadline is today. Post on the chat. Feel free to post on the chat if you are registered already, right? Uh, if you're registered already, we would like to know. Post on the chat and say, yes, you are registered and what university you registered with. Uh, in fact, I'll post a link on the on the chat here. Let me just do that. This is uh, one of our link Alliance for AI. It's like a Google Sheet. We would love for you to go there and write your name and the name of your university and perhaps what, select what challenge you're going to compete on, right? Which of the three challenges? Uh, I'll actually even share my screen here. So I'll just show you how to. Because we really want you guys to win. Last year, two Alliance for AI groups won. Uh, and so this year, we want you guys to win again. I mean, it's, it's, you're using AI to do good things and solve good problems and, and you're winning money, right? The team from Tunisia won uh, over $3,000 if I'm not uh, mistaken. So please, 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 you guys do what you can to win. We will create ways for you guys to chat with one another. Like it should not end today where you guys can continue talking and, and supporting yourselves. I'm just sharing my screen now so you can see this. Once you go into this uh, future, this is the home of future makers, but I'm opening it to everybody today. Uh, you can come here and you write your name, you write your email, the university that you're going to team with for this. Which of the three projects are you going to want to participate in? You know, uh, Rose talked about this earlier on, but I'll just go. You can see that the first one is Sandy. It's a transportation thing, right? I believe it's a transportation problem they're trying to solve. The next one is from InstaDeep in Tunisia. They're trying to solve a healthcare challenge, right? Using AI to solve a healthcare problem. And then the third one is for beginners. If there are any beginners amongst you, it's a little easier uh, for two thousands of dollars to win. I think almost up to $3,000. You can imagine that uh, for your team. And it's on finance, using AI to predict some risk in finance. So you select the one you're going to participate in. If you already know your Zindi ranking, you can write that. And we talked about writing. If you are someone that likes to write and you're part of your university team, you can, at the end of this, you write about the experience of your team. Like, you know, what was it like preparing? What was it like competing? And if you won, what was it like winning? So we'd like to have more of you so that you can tell these stories and you will excite other people to, to join this kind of program. Um, so here's where you can post things. But of course, you know that it doesn't notify anybody when you write something here. So feel free to also use the LinkedIn group, right? This gives you access to LinkedIn. So if you open that, there's Alliance for AI Future Makers here. You can come here and you can post questions that you have uh, and see if any of these other incredible people who are already here can, can answer your questions as you prepare for this, right? Uh, if you guys also like WhatsApp, maybe later we'll create a WhatsApp group for you as well. Uh, so these are the key things that you can do. And perhaps I will also add the link to Twitter account here so that you can follow us on Twitter and also use that to ask questions if you have. So with that, I will give it back to uh, the next presenter. Uh, because of time, maybe I'll ask that, uh, maybe you keep it a little shorter, uh, maybe less technical and more about the tips of how did you even prepare? What did you eat the morning before the Umoja Hackathon? Uh, how, how did you sleep the night before? Uh, just some, some tips that get people excited and, and, and ready for this. And on the day, what kind of computer did you use? Did you use a laptop or did you go to a cyber cafe to use something more powerful? Did you use GPUs? Did you use the cloud? Did you use Google Colab? You know, how did you, just different, different soft tips. Uh, and then um, uh, there can be some question and answer. So with that, I will give it back to Betty, who will tell us who, who's, who's the next speaker. Thank you. Um, thanks, Alex. 
and Lawrence for your insight. Guys, I, I hope you're making notes. Well, what has happened? Oh, sorry for that. <laughs> Um, so I was saying, guys, I hope you're making notes. Personally, I'm, I'm writing some short notes here. So if you don't have a book, just get one and just scribble something because these are really important um, things to, to, to learn. So our next speaker is Aza Suri um, from Tunisia. I hope I have pronounced your name well. It looks like Aza is happening. Okay, I'm um, sorry for that, Aza. Let me just introduce the other speaker, um, Ted, Ted Mutomi. Well, actually, he's written something on the chat. Uh, do you hear me? Okay, now I think you hear me. Yes. Okay, great. So, thank you, Betty. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Ezer Suri from Tunisia, and today I will share some tricks about how to approach a challenge. Um, so, let me share my screen. Just a second. Okay. Um, I want to know if my screen is... Do you see my screen or not? Yes, we can see it. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So, hello everyone. Uh, today I will present... I will talk about a challenge in Zindi. Uh, it, it's uh, the last competition in Zindi named CGR Crop Yield Prediction. So, firstly, I am honored to announce that I and my teammates, Nikhil Mishra and Darius Morori, we were able to secure the first place in this challenge. So, this was a really uh, amazing challenge, a special challenge, because there isn't a lot of resources. So, it needs a lot, a lot of research to get something. And that's why I decided to choose this challenge to talk about it. So I, it will be so beneficial to our attendance. So our plan for this uh, presentation is uh, to talk uh, about, firstly, uh, to understand the objective of this challenge. Next, we will be to we'll talk about some findings. Uh, that helps us into approaching the problem. And finally, we will talk step by step about uh, approaching the problem, okay? So let's start with, uh, let's dive in understanding, as understanding our problem. Once you enroll for the competition, our first step is to take a look on the challenge info description part. And in this part, you will find a part of text that start with the objective of this challenge or the aim of this challenge. And in this part, you will find you will uh, you'll find you, the goal of the challenge. So our goal of this challenge is to predict and to create a model capable of estimating the crop cut maize yield for fields in East Afri Africa. Okay. Maybe you, you, we can get a lot of information from this part. So what we have to do is to go also to the data part and you will find a part of text that will talk more about the target, 
uh, you can find also more detail more details about the target so you will understand when you check those two parts the description in the info part and the data when you read it carefully you will understand the objective of this challenge and understanding the objective of the challenge and what is your target is so important for next step so now let's talk about tricks to benefit from research findings because a lot of us uh, can uh, can uh, have a lot of time pass it a lot of time searching and searching but they didn't get something useful. So I want to share some tricks that you will accelerate your research and you will find something use, useful. Okay. So, uh, okay. So the first step is you should, you should know what is the country that will benefit from your, your challenge. So from our, for our case, the country is Kenya. Okay, so what we have to do is um, what we have to do is to make some research and find what is the maize season in Kenya. Okay, what is the maize season in Kenya? What we, and what we have uh, and we have found that the maize season in Kenya here is the maize season starts from March to November. Okay. And how we can translate this finding is by instead of working on all months of the year, we will work only with the months of this season. What I mean is to work only with months from March to November or from March to September. Uh, you should experiment those, this finding and see what months give you give more information to your model so so your your performance will be uh, more more than uh, how to say it <laughs> okay let's pass this uh, slide okay so the next finding is when you complete reading the description in the data part, you will find that the data was uh, collected by the satellite Sentinel-2. Okay, what we have to do now? We know that our data is derived from the satellite Sentinel-2. So what we have to do is to see what are the characteristics of this satellite. Okay. So, um, okay, so what we have discovered is that there is some bands that we should ignore totally. Those bands are B1 and B9 and B10. Why? The question is why we should ignore those uh, bands? Because those bands are related to the cloud, okay? And we have also found that those bands, named uh, uh, the vegetation red edge bands, are essential, in, are essential and are frequently used in predicting the crop yield prediction. So how we can benefit from this information? So when we know, when, when, when you know something like that, you know, when you know, when you search and you would find something like that, you find that vegetation red edge bands are essential in predicting your competition target. So what, we, you, what you will have to do? It's easy. So you will have to search more about those vegetation red edge and how we can use them in approaching our uh, in approaching our problem so and after a lot of research i found this beautiful website custom scripts that give you what we say, what we call vegetation indexes and those vegetation indexes are the, are essential and are frequently used 
in predicting the crop yield prediction. The crop yield, okay? So what are the vegetation indexes? We have some examples like NDVI, normalized difference between near and red bands. We have NDRE, and we have a lot of, and a lot and a lot of uh, vegetation indexes. So in this website, when you click in the playground, in the playground, so it will give you uh, the formula, uh, the formula of this vegetation index. And I will talk the, uh, about this in the next section with an example. An example. So now let's talk about uh, how we can approach uh, the problem. So this, I, uh, as I said, this challenge was so special. Even the data, they give us a lot, a lot of data. So uh, we have some CSV files, uh, we have some, uh, some uh, document files, we have some zip files, and a lot, uh, a lot of different files. So how the problem is how we can we create our train and test data sets from those data, and especially from those zip files, who contains some NumPy arrays. This is really the main problem, our first problem in this challenge. How can we create the train and test data sets from NumPy arrays? So one solution, one solution, and I say one solution because there, there is a lot of solutions for this challenge. And one solution was to create, calculate the vegetation indexes arrays like NDVI, NDRE. Then after calculating those arrays, you will get some statistics from the result, uh, resulting array. What I mean by statistics is calculate the mean, the standard deviation, the median, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe it is not clear, but don't worry, we will explain this in the next slide. Okay, let's take an example. We will calculate the NDVI index, which is we subtract the band four from the band eight, and then divided by the sum of those two bands, okay? This is the formula. And how can we explore those, this formula? Let's take an example of what is B8 and what is B4. B8 and B4 are two arrays. We can see them as a matrix. So in Python, it's very easy to apply this formula, just wrote it, just wrote it, and it will give you a resulting array with the same shape of the two arrays. So this will be our NDVI array. When you apply directly for the formula, you will get this array. After getting this array, you will apply some statistics over all the array. You will apply the mean, the median, and some deviation using the NumPy library. Okay, it's maybe it's not that clear, but I will attach the code of this approach so you will understand clearly what I mean when I say uh, something like that. Okay. So after doing that, so in, uh, let's go, uh, in conclusion, in each step, we will calculate the mean, the median, standard deviation for each uh, individual index for each month. And the final step, you will get a data set like that. You have a field ID, then you have standard deviation of NDVI for month zero, the mean of NDVI for month zero, the median of NDVI for month zero, et cetera, et cetera, until you get the standard deviation of NDVI of month 11 and et cetera, et cetera, okay? After getting this train data set, you will apply baseline model, let's say an IGBM, XGBoost, CatBoost. There is a lot, a lot of models that you will you can find in Kaggle or in GitHub. Uh, there is a lot of resources to get a baseline model. And then you will get your first performance. Then you will, 
you will get uh, some ideas of the getting the first performance and you will restart your work and uh, maybe you can add some different uh, some other vegetation indexes and like that so so um maybe uh maybe you will understand more what uh i want the the, the full approach when you read the first place overall summary you will find it in this link i will uh I will wrote it in the discussion part now. And the solution, and I created a solution code. So you will find it in my GitHub repository. So, and uh, I hope that you you get something about this, this uh, approach and thank you.